Um, okay, so Raw, basically what went down, um, we had the aftermath of the King and uh, Queen of the Ring. We know that, um, you know, Gunther is going to get a title shot. We had Braun Strowman come back, come back, came back, however, whatever. He wrestled J.D. McDonough on the show. <laughs> and uh, that was solid, whatever. We have more, basically, um, they, they, they're positioning... I've been saying it forever. Liv Morgan, Carlito, they're going to replace Rhea and Damian in the Judgment Day. Um, I've said it a bunch of times here. We had Braun Breaker. Uh, he, he interfered in Ricochet versus Dragunov, whatever. Uh, not whatever. It's good stuff. But we got uh, Cross. You know, he's f***ing with Xavier. Uh, cussing already so early. Going to have to edit that out. Editing, Phil. And then... Um, the authors of pain one Seamus uh, fights Ludwig, you know, they're, they're intense. Find that the reason I'm skimming through all of this is because there's two important things we need to get to. So basically, you know, we had Ray and Carlito, two vets threw down. They haven't wrestled in 20 years. Um, Chad Gable, he's doing great character work. We're seeing like uh, the dissension and the deception in the um, alpha Academy, if you will. And uh, this is starting to split up as well. We're going to see what happens. People are saying, oh, Jake Hager, which we're going to talk about. You know, there's like an AEW exodus of talent going on. And if you guys listen to PWT podcast and you guys listen to PWT live show, then, you know, uh, Connor Hassler has been on here and he he uh, and he has some insight on indie stuff. You know, that's why it's why I bring him on the show. Anybody who comes on the show, they add value to the show. They add value to you guys giving blessing me with your time listening to me babbling so and us babbling so uh basically he said you know there's going to be an aew talent like exodus if you will is the word i use and uh, we're seeing it we're seeing it so we're going to cover it um in a bit but jake hager i think he could come in and be the new heater for gable no or is that too is that too he's a former world champion that because they can't just bring him in as like a top guy i just don't see hager in that position anymore and I don't think people would really care too much. Um, so, you know, Hager versus Otis and like Hager being Gable's new guy. I don't know. That's my X-Files. I don't know if you guys like that or not. But basically, though, we had a steel cage match and it was f***ing, it was pretty good. And uh, Liv Morgan defends the title, as I'm sure we all figured she would. And then Becky Lynch, that was sort of her her contracts coming up, guys. And uh, the rumors are, oh, she Rebecca Quinn to AEW confirm. That's not ever going to happen. Uh, sorry to play spoiler, your boy Phil Marks. Um, if I'm right about anything, I'm telling you guys right now, I'm right about this. <laughs> I was right about the MJF shit like a year ago. You know what I mean? Everybody's talking about it now. So what, what Becky's going to do, she's never going to leave WWE. She's going to maybe take her contract over to Tony Khan and AEW and say, look, this is what they're offering me. Tony will go, well, I'll give you this much money. It'll be great. It'll be so great. And then she'll just bring it back over to WWE and go, look. He'll give me this much. He'll match everything you're doing. Give me less dates and give me this much. Just give me this much and then I'll sign right. And then they'll do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, she might levy or do a little tease or whatever, but she just needs a break and she was supposed to take a break, you know, but Rhea got hurt and, um, you know, the dirt sheets weren't entirely wrong on that, you know, um, that Becky was because they all said it, you know, Becky's taking a break. And uh, she she tweeted out like, "Oh yeah, I'm taking a break. Really, I'm I'm the champion." But it is because Rhea got hurt, so uh, she is taking her little bit of a break. Let her hang out with her family, you know. Let the storylines progress. How do we miss you if you don't go away? And they're gonna keep people talking about her, and they're gonna keep the intrigue and the excitement. And when she does come back, um, it'll be awesome, and we can laugh at people melting down in the meantime about um, you know about her signing elsewhere which isn't going to happen um and then people are saying tna that she won't she's too big of a star right so um i'm not saying we won't ever maybe see her in the crowd especially now with the tna working relationship which we're going to get into but uh becky lynch is uh, i think i have some phil marks bookmarks here yeah so chris jericho jerry hogan He's talking to TMZ Sports, and he has something to say about Becky Lynch possibly uh, joining AEW. Jared Hogan discusses the possibility that Becky Lynch could join AEW, and he says, um, five years ago, 
Becky would have no other options. Let me tell you. I'm telling you, she'd have no other options. I'm not saying that she is coming per se, but there is an option. And who knows? Who knows what could happen? It could be huge. It could be huge. No one thought that Jericho, no one thought that I would come to AEW, not Vince McMahon, not Crooked Hillary, not Sleepy Joe. <laughs> no, no one thought that Moxley would come or Brian Danielson or Adam Cole. He's huge. He's huge. China or any of these guys that have come over. So it's exciting for the fans. It's exciting for the wrestlers, the talent, because now suddenly if there's a bidding war, that just benefits us. So I think it's very important. She's not going there, guys, okay? Jericho's talking out of his ass. She ain't going there. It ain't happening. So, um, yeah, and then here's Dom kissing. This is when Raw went off the air, too. So this is what I mean, right? This is all part of the Raw review here slash... Um, the news, the hot news, as Conan would say. <laughs> Conan, where is it? I can't find it. Here we go. Soundboard, dummy. Conan. Conan. So, um, yeah, here's them kissing, right? Like, it's game over. <laughs> Mommy's going to get on that ass. No diddy. Um, and... And Dom, dude, like his for shoot wife is just a babe. He's got you know, Liv and Rhea, the two babiness babes, fighting over him. Look how he's like reluctantly like, no, don't kiss me. That takes a strong man, dude. <laughs> he's got that Latino heat, dude. But yeah, I find that stuff great, dude. It's great. I find all that stuff awesome. Uh, that raw people are like raws in a lull. I don't know. I don't really fully agree with that. Like, I think it's. It's been pretty good. Um, USA didn't show this. Yeah. The kiss got more than 60 million views. Exactly. Because we all... Whew, 60 million views in 16 hours. Yeah. Like, we all want to see Liv making out with people. And these are the... Like, Judgment Day, say what you will. But they've been the through line. Like, the carrying underlying B story when Bloodline's not involved. You got Judgment Day telling great stories throughout it, whether it be funny stories or serious stories or stories with romance or cuckoldry, <laughs> whatever it may be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're they're telling this the they're they're telling stuff, man. They're telling us tales, and uh, I'm here for it, as the boomers would say. <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh, I'm having a laugh today, guys. Today's a good day. 